About a month ago, we announced that Hannah was going to make a quilt. But a lot has been going on, mainly a lot of people saying, when is Hannah going to start making her quilt? So today, we're going to have a beginner makes a practice quilt. Keep watching. Hannah, I am so excited that you came up with this idea. You see, when we first started out, Hannah was going to make a quilt. We ordered the fabric. Mm -hmm. The fabric still isn't here. Yeah, we're still waiting. Still waiting patiently for that fabric that we showed you. Mm -hmm. But she has a great idea. And all of you have been asking, where's Hannah? When is Hannah going to start? So what's your idea? Well, to answer the question of where's Hannah, I've been here the whole time. You just don't see me anymore. Natalie holds up the quilt so that I can be over there with a little clipboard and I watch and make sure everything's running smoothly. So that's where I am for those people who've asked in the comments, where's Hannah? Um, and this quilt idea, so my sister-in-law just made her first three-yard quilt. Mm -hmm. She made stepping stones, um, which is going to be the one I make with the fabric we ordered. But I want to give mine as a gift, and I'm a little bit worried about giving a quilt as a gift on my very first one. But you know, your very first one is going to be the worst one you ever do. Yeah, exactly. So, and they'll just get better. Yeah, so I didn't really want to give that to someone as a present. But I don't mind having a quirky quilt in my house. Just fine. And my sister-in-law made a practice quilt for her first one. Before she cut into her, her really nice fabric, the ones she was really looking forward to, she got some really cheap fabric and made her own version with that. But you didn't get cheap fabric. I this didn't. Time. I still wanted pretty stuff because <laughs> I want to put it in my house. So that's good. That's good. I'm just okay with a few crooked blocks for okay. myself. Well, let's see what you chose. Okay. So for the pattern, I chose so quick. Um, this one is very, very simple. You've just got these big blocks here, and then we've got this four patch. Um, so I thought I can handle that. That's something I can do. So let's put that up here and then we'll look at our fabric. All right. Well, I think that's the perfect one to pick. I tell people mm -hmm. all the time that this is one of the best ones if you want to make your first quilt. Mm -hmm. So let's see what you have. Okay. So I saw this in the shop uh, the other day and I just really wanted to have a quilt from it. So uh, I decided this would be the perfect fabric to start with. It's some kitties, some cute little blue kitties which will go right here in your big block as your focus. And then we have for our second, we have this stripe. So that'll go uh, here where the polka dot is. And then we've got these pretty flowers, which correspond really well with the flowers on the kitty fabric. Now there's stripes on this one mm -hmm. that you're saying you're gonna use this where the yellow is. Do you know why you chose it that way? Well, because it's the lightest one, and that's the lightest one. See, she listens when she watches our videos, so that's perfect. I just wanted to give her a little test along the way. And I think that would be fun, too, to put it in this little border. But that does raise a point, Donna. We could always switch these two so that our stripe is in the border. You could do that, but what do you prefer? That's the fun of three-yard quilts. You get to make your own decisions. Okay. I think I'll put it in the little border. I think okay. it'll look really good there. I think it'll look really cute there. And even though it's just a little bit, it just adds that little pizzazz. Mm -hmm. Very and good. And then it'll be the binding too, so that's cute. Well, what if they want to quilt along with you? Oh, well, you can get this kit. The information is 8021801 Kitty Muse. The pattern is so quick. And that is available as an individual or in the book Quilt Favorites. And if they take it as an individual, they get the pattern free. That's right. All right. Well, I have a little gift for you. Mm -hmm. This is the kinds of things that I always recommend that beginners start with. They're things that are very good and very helpful. And <gasps> for you. Oh, thank you. And I'll tell you what these are. Okay. Okay. I didn't know I was getting a gift. Well, you know, you have to have these little surprises. <laughs> Okay. Ziploc baggies. 
These are very handy when you're organizing your pieces and parts that you're going to be sewing with, and we'll be showing you how to use those. Oh, I okay. like organization. Yes, Sharpies. Now, it's very important that if you're going to mark your plastic bags that you use a Sharpie that's not a wipe-off. You don't want to mm -hmm. use um, uh, the dry erase markers because that would maybe rub off on your fabric. So if you want to, you can use a ballpoint pen and put a mm -hmm. note in the uh, bag with your pieces and parts, or you can write with these. Uh, ah. So that's why I gave you those. Oh. And we'll be showing mm -hmm. you how to use those. Okay. And then sewing edge. That is so important for getting your quarter inch, and it's one of the easiest ways for a beginner to get started, mm -hmm. to learn how to make a perfect quarter inch. I need all the help I can get. All right. And then last thing. Best Press. Now, Best Press is awesome. It will help you to put a little more body in your fabric. And, you know, some people like to pre-wash. Mm -hmm. They like to get their fabric and pre-wash. Now, I don't pre-wash my fabrics. I like the feel of the sizing in the fabric. Mm -hmm. And I also like when I finish the quilt and I wash it the first time, I like the way it gets this little old-fashioned pucker mm -hmm. because cotton will slightly shrink. It's not a whole lot, but it, it actually the fibers will kind of get a little bit closer together and mm -hmm. cause uh, them to lock together. Oh. If you pre-wash, you want to make sure that you overcast any raw edges because that will cut down on the amount of fraying and raveling that's going on. Gotcha. And then if you pre-wash and you do that little overcast and you take it out of the washer and the dryer, then you'll want to use the best press to put mm -hmm. some sizing back in the fabric. Otherwise, it's just kind of limp and gotcha. it doesn't have a lot of body to it. So gotcha. if you don't want to pre-wash, if you use good quality fabric, it should all shrink pretty close together. Mm -hmm. And of course, Fabric Cafe only has good stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, you pre-wash if you want to. I don't. Yeah. I, I, after I was hearing the descriptions, and also I hate doing laundry, I think I'm going to go the <laughs> not pre-washing uh, path. I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laundry's not my favorite. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Well... I think I might be ready to get started then. All right. Well, what's coming up next is we are going to show you how to cut and organize your fabrics. Mm -hmm. All right. I think I have everything. All right. How do we get started? Okay. First of all, um, let's press your fabric. Okay. Now, we get a lot of nice compliments about how pretty our kits are and how well the fabric is folded. But do you know that even though it's very well folded, you're still going to get some creases. And you mm -hmm. don't want those creases in there because when you start cutting, it, it could actually cause you to cut and have a little bump or a little mm -hmm. glitch in it. So the first thing you want to do is press. Now, there, now, what's the difference between pressing and ironing? Okay, good question. Uh, to press your fabric, think about picking your iron up and putting it down. Mm -hmm. Ironing is where you kind of push down and you push and you don't want to distort your fabric. So we're going to press with, a, with just a little bit of steam and mm -hmm. then we're going to let it rest. Okay. And then um, if you want to push your iron or move your iron, you'll just kind of almost hover over, you'll get the knack of it when you're working, but you want gotcha. to kind of hover. So let me reach okay. over here and show you what I'm talking yeah, I'll about. Yeah, move out of your way. So to, to iron in the old fashioned, you're trying to press all those out, but it would distort your fabric. Mm -hmm. So we want to just take, and I am actually not allowing the weight of the f iron to be on the fabric as okay. I'm going over this. I'm actually kind of gliding or holding it just above the fabric. Mm. Now, you also want to allow your fabric to rest because while it's slightly damp with the steam, mm -hmm. it could distort by your handling it. So we're, yeah. we're going to just leave that for the moment. You'll press the whole piece uh -huh. and then we'll start cutting. Okay? okay. All right. So 
do you want to go ahead and press the whole piece now? Yeah, I'll go. Do and, you think it's mm -hmm. been long enough if I... Yeah, carefully. I think it's okay now because we didn't saturate it. We mm -hmm. just we just wanted to get some of those little bumps and and creases in there out. Okay. And that's going to be your first step whenever you come to um, when it comes to pressing it. Now, see how easy it is to glide it without yeah. without pressing or pushing down on the irons. And modern irons are so nice because they have special titanium coatings and things <laughs> like that. Now, um, when you're pressing, um, if you have a particularly pesky wrinkle, mm -hmm. is it okay to burst it with a, a, a little bit more steam? Yes. Like use the button? You just don't, yes, but you just don't want to start moving it until you're finished. Gotcha. And you know, I didn't mention this to you, and I, I'm sorry, this is a little bit out of order, but you also want to check your fabric whenever mm -hmm. you first start and make sure it's pretty well lined up. Occasionally when they roll the fabric mm -hmm. uh, when, on the bolts, mm -hmm. they will actually kind of distort it a little bit. So make sure that your fabric has matched it's up even. on the sides. Okay. Okay, now see, I'm looking at this and I thought mm -hmm. I saw a little bit of a, um, a place, but it looks like it kind of relaxed out of there, so I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Last little uh, bit, and then it's ready. And then it'll be ready. And then we'll just leave it lying there while we talk about a couple of other things All right. that we want to talk about. Okay. All First right. Step down. So we're going to refer back to the pattern now, mm -hmm. and we are going to talk about cutting your pieces. So the cutting instructions are in a box, mm -hmm. and these boxes will have everything you need to know about cutting. A lot of people say their least favorite part of mm -hmm. sewing is the cutting. But really, once you kind of get the hang of it, it goes pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like to do this, cut their quilt, mm -hmm. and then put it in their baggies, and mm -hmm. just take a break. Mm -hmm. And then when you get started with the sewing, it just feels like it's just zooming along. Yeah. And it's, it's like, okay, I got the hard part over. <laughs> I can move along. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut two ten and a half by width of fabric. So, okay. So, Donna, you said width of fabric. Is that what WOF stands for? Yes. Okay. And that is talked about up here in this note. Ooh. So, the note gives you some basic information. WOF is width of fabric. Mm -hmm. You want to use a quarter inch seam allowance throughout. And we have written this pattern to utilize the 44 inch wide fabric or after you trim off your selvages, it will be approximately 42 inches. Gotcha. Okay. So Donna, I have another question about the cutting. Mm -hmm. um, my second fabric is a stripe. Right. Uh, are there any tips or tricks? Because I know a lot of people are scared of stripes. So, are you afraid of stripes? I don't think so, but I haven't done any quilting, so I don't know if I'm supposed to be. <laughs> are you supposed to be afraid? <laughs> yeah. The number one size. thing is you're not supposed to be afraid because that just mm -hmm. kind of locks you up. So okay, okay. Just just breathe easily. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that's best if you're mm -hmm. working with stripes for the first time is to pick out a pattern where mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about whether or not you're using stripes. And okay. so quick is perfect for that because those stripes are not going to be butting up against each other any place mm -hmm. that need to be going a specific way. And we'll show that again later on. We can talk about that when we look at your finished quilt okay. and how none of those stripes had to match up end to end. Gotcha. Okay, okay. so that's that really the sense. secret. Okay, you ready to get started? I think so. All right. So now we've let that rest, and mm -hmm. we'll take this over here. The very first um, thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut two ten and a half by with the fabric from those strips. You're going to cut eight ten and a half by ten and a half blocks. Okay. So we're going to cut a strip that's ten and a half by the width of the fabric. And the width okay. will go from your selvages to your folds. So let's pull that over. Oh. Okay. Okay. And let's see, we don't need it quite that far. Okay. okay, the number one thing you want to do is you want to straighten up your edges. And so we're going to do that like this. I'm going to move the pattern over here. Okay. All right. So first of all, I try to get a spot where you can line up either the bottom, the selvages, and we made sure our selvages were straight, mm -hmm. and then 
make sure that it's kind of straight up here. So it's actually touching a line here and here. Now, we always straighten our fabric first mm -hmm. so that you're starting off on the right foot. Gotcha. And even though they're fairly stra uh, straight, they're not exactly. So let me show you. We're going to use the 24-inch ruler. And the 24-inch ruler has all of these measurements. And you want to make sure that you understand that on a ruler like this, you're going to have full squares. See those full squares? This is actually a five and a, a five and six. This is a six inch. One, two, three, four, five, six inch um, ruler. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they have the quarter inch and the half inch marks. So those are really very, very important because That's you're going iron. to be using. <laughs> Yeah, if you have an automatic shut off iron, every once in a while it will sing for you. It's impatient. It wants you to get back <laughs> on with ironing. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to trim this off at the end. I personally have a frugal streak in me that's just, mm -hmm. it's just part of my DNA, I uh -huh. believe. And so I, that's why I came up with an economy quilt. So therefore, you don't want to go in here and whack off two inches of fabric trying to straighten it. Right. So we're going to use the lines on our table to help us get this straight. So if you'll look right up here, see how I'm doing this? And then I go down here and I want this to be on the line and this to be on the line. Mm -hmm. But we also want it to be straight there and there. Otherwise, you'll get a parallelogram when you start cutting. Gotcha. Now, see, there's just a little bit here that we're going to be cutting off. And I'm actually using the one inch mark. Now, sometimes you have to go a little bit further. You are not measuring here. You're lining it up here and here on that line. Gotcha. Then we're going to take our, our rotary cutter. And I am a very short person, in case you've never <laughs> noticed. <laughs> and I, I often call it full body um, cutting because uh -huh. sometimes I have to lean to get up here to the very top. Gotcha. But we're going to start here. And this is important. Don't cut your finger off. Okay. Okay. And, cool. You know, we just don't want that to happen. Keep your, <laughs> I like to keep them. <laughs> keep your hand behind uh, this line here. Okay. But you do want to push down and then use more or less the top of the uh, rotary cutter because you'll mm -hmm. get more pressure. Okay. If you're doing it like this, you're not getting as much pressure. But if you'll turn it just slightly up and then see, I'm going to stop right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk my fingers up and we're going to use that top part of your rotary cutter. And then we're going to keep going. Mm. And then I like to take this off and see if I have a full piece of fabric. Ah, oh, there's so just sure a little. Have any. Yeah, there's a little sliver there that's not quite full. But you know what? It just took it off of the edge. So this is what I mean by being very frugal. Gotcha. If you wanted to take another quarter inch, you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> we actually use about thirty about 34 to 34 mm -hmm. and a half inches. So you have an inch or two to, um, a little wiggle to play room. with, right? That's nice. Okay, That's so nice. you feel like you got that? Yeah. Okay, so. the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're going to use your, uh, you wanna do the table for your cutting, uh, counting. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I, I think it's a half, right? Ten and a half? Very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> I listened to the pattern. <laughs> That's very good. And so maybe we should double check just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, it's in and a half. <laughs> All right. Very good. So what is what is that phrase you measure, measure? Measure twice, cut once. You can't cut twice and measure once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if you only measure once, you might cut twice. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, we know that this is going to be your 10 inch. Uh -huh. So. Let's count it again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa. Well, here's the, you were in the half. Was I in the half? Yeah, One, yeah. One, two, this. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then there's the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now how do you get the half? We're going to take our ruler, and we are going to line it up with this. And the little the, dotted line. Yeah, so see that little dotted line right here? Mm-hmm. That's a half inch in, and we're measuring it up with this and down here. Mm -hmm. Now, just to be on the safe side, we're going to count three times. So cool. go up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
and a half. Cool. Okay? Okay. <gasps> okay. It's your turn. All righty. Okay. I'm going to go on this side. Okay. All right. I'm going to make sure I'm all... Lined up. That it didn't get knocked off at all. Yeah, I'm a little too short to see all the way over there, too. Okay. So double check down here mm -hmm. that you have the same lines across here, too. See how okay. you're, you're, you're actually measuring on... Uh, Sometimes you use your quarter inch, sometimes you use your uh, third of an inch. It's a very impatient iron. Yeah, it likes to iron. It does, it wants to work. Okay. All righty. <laughs> it's not like so a bad, spider. It? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now. This is your this is your tip. Okay. Leave your ruler there. Okay. And pull this fabric back and see if it all cut. <gasps> see, if it didn't all cut and you have one thread, it uh -huh. kind of shifts your fabric. And so I like to do that just mm -hmm. to make sure because sometimes you have to go back and maybe cut do another little, thread. And you yeah. want it to make sure it's still on that straight right. line that you made. Remember how uh -huh. I did that other where I took that away without uh -huh. moving the fabric. Yeah. Okay. okay. And normally you're not going to have your iron sitting right here. Right. So you'd have your whole piece stretched out there. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Now, do you want to keep cutting or do you want me to show you what to do with that and then go away and leave you alone? <laughs> <laughs> you can show me what to do with this. Okay. So now you've cut that 10 and a half inch. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to your, um, okay. your piece of paper there with your instructions. <laughs> So it tells you to cut the 10 and a half inch strip, and from mm -hmm. these strips, cut eight 10 and a half by 10 and a half block A. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and pick this up. I'm going to let you come back and finish cutting those, but let's go ahead and keep going so people can see how this works. All right. Okay. So we're going to do a 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. Now, when you open up this strip, it's going to have a little bump in the middle. Mm -hmm. Even though we were pressing before, Oh. It's going to have a little bit of a bump there. So you want to mm -hmm. press that out. Okay. And at this point, I like to put a little more body in my quilt. So I'm going to use best press. Okay. So again, you don't want to press this in such a way that you distort your fabric. Mm -hmm. One way is to do it this way. And the other way is to turn it and go the length of your ironing board so that you get it all on the ironing board gotcha. at once. So we're going to press this. And you do have to wait just a little bit because you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you are um, not distorting the fabric by moving it. So yeah. you want this to get a little bit cool before you uh, start moving it around. Then we're going to move this down, and that's what we're trying to get rid of. And there's a gotcha. little one there, too. Oh, yeah, I missed it. So what's the benefit of using best press? What? Best press is, is considered a sizing. Uh -huh. And it actually puts a little more body in your fabric. Okay. It helps to not have as much fraying as you're handling your fabric oh. because it kind of glues the fibers together mm -hmm. until you finish your quilt and then you launder it. Okay. And whenever they create cotton, they actually weave it and they use what's called a sizing mm -hmm. to kind of hold those fibers together mm -hmm. from the manufacturer. That's okay. why if you wash it, you wash away the sizing, uh, and it goes kind of limp. Gotcha. Okay? Okay. All right. So when I'm ironing, do mm -hmm. I need, or pressing, excuse me, um, do I need to press it first, then spray best press, and then press again, or can I just? You can spray, and it, I don't think that one really matters quite okay. as much. But again, you just don't want to press the fabric real hard and actually um, maybe accidentally distort it. Gotcha. And you got the hang of that because it just kind of glides yeah. over it. And then again, you have to wait for it to um, kind of cool off a little bit. So. I don't think that actually helps. It's like when you cry and you go <laughs> to try to dry it. And I don't think it does anything, but I do it anyway. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> Put a little extra down there. I see a little bump. <gasps> okay. This is a sneaky little selvage. Yes, it just depends on the manufacturer. Different manufacturers have a different um, weaving process, and uh -huh. some of them have kind of shaggy um, selvages, and others have really nice straight 
Yeah, well, so. and it's uh, normally I see it when it's like white. bright white. Yeah, yeah. this is um, this is actually colored. kind of good. And let me explain to you why. If you are making your strip, I usually trim off my uh, selvage on one side before mm -hmm. I start doing my blocks. Mm -hmm. And it's nice if you leave it on the other end, just in case it's a skinnier fabric. So you, you know, have a little wiggle yeah. room. Most manufacturers that we use are true to their word. If they mm -hmm. say it's going to be 44, 45, that means that it'll be about 43, 42 mm -hmm. in that range when you take off the selvage. Okay. But it, it's nice to have that because you <laughs> might have to kind of squeeze a little bit into your yeah. um, uh, process. And with let's that see. one, now you see, wouldn't this even one notice. has the white. Gotcha. So let's put that down here and we'll use the your cutting your rotary cutter and your ruler to mm -hmm. cut that off okay okay all right so here we go so remember how to line it up on your on your lines yes now because this is a ten and a half inch strip I mm -hmm. can only line it up by one right because it's not right there's not no tall enough good point okay um I suppose I need to get it over just a little more yes that's good and then if I cut on that line, it'll just cut. It'll just cut it off. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. It's kind of like a, get like out a of your puzzle way here. or a game or something. <laughs> okay. So then I put my ruler on this one, the edge of it. I'm lining it up at the bottom. Right. So you're lining it on these lines as well mm -hmm. as that, you know, the... Uh, the, what is it, perpendicular? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do our math lesson now. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be artsy. Well, math can be artsy, too. Yeah. I'm just not, I just don't care for it very much. I'm sorry to all those math people out there. <laughs> we need you, too. That's why, I why we say. need them, because I don't like doing it. I need math people in my life. I love it, because I can say to Bob, so... If you convert three eighths of an inch into metrics, what is it going to be? Oh, you remembered. Very good. <laughs> All right. Ta da! That's pretty good. There's barely any, That's any right. fabric you on there. That's right. You did good. And we, like I said, we're going to leave this one just in case you have to fudge a little bit. Okay. You don't want to put your whole selvage in the seam, but mm -hmm. every once in a while you might have to just take a sliver. I doubt if you do on this one. It's, it, looks pretty accurate mm -hmm. okay now you're going to cut your ten and a half inch block okay so i've cut my big strip mm -hmm. cut my salvage um i need to get to a whole one i'm gonna move it over a little yeah okay get it out of line get it straight Count 10 times. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the rule. If it's 10 and a half, you have to count it 10 and a half times. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stick this here and then I'm going to count again. Oh. No. Okay. I thought I moved my fabric. Okay. Now count it again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. Very good. Okay. I think I can get it in one. I have small hands, but big enough for this, apparently. Very good. Oh, I forgot. I didn't. Well. You know, you'll get the hang of it. The first few times that you pull it and this, there's a thread still hanging there. You'll, you'll oh, learn. You'll catch on that. fast. That's going to be so cute. All I'm so right. excited. So do you want me to hover or do you want me to go away? Uh, you can do whatever you want. Well, I have the call of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to leave Hannah call. here. Y'all watch her and make sure she doesn't make any mistakes. Oh, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> nerve-wracking. <laughs> Okay. All right. I think I can do it. Okay. Oh, and I have I have my baggies. Uh-huh. And my papers. All right. So I think I want to go the paper route. Okay. Like you mentioned earlier. Um so when I cut all of these, I'll just put them in a little baggie that has my information on it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Are you finished with me for a little while? I think so. I think yeah. I can do it. I'll okay. holler if I get real desperate. I'm just in the next room. Okay. All right. <laughs>I've got four blocks here. One, two, three, four. I know, I know I'm cutting eight from these, these two strips that I'm doing right at the top, um, but I'm gonna double check and see if I have any more. Uh, I do, I do. I have two more that are gonna come from another strip. Um, and one nice thing about these patterns too is I have a picture. So I can just, if I'm ever uncertain, I can just come over here and look and um, count my blocks here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll get ten, ten and a half by ten and a half inch blocks. And I'm a very visual person, so that's, that's really helpful for me. So I don't know. Being quilters, I imagine many of you are visual as well, visual learners. Uh, so I'm going to make my label. So this is fabric one, and I'm gonna go the paper route, uh, cause that way if I mess up on my piece of paper, I can throw it away <laughs> and I haven't ruined a bag. Uh, and I can reuse my bags later. So I'm gonna write fabric one on my label, and then um, I'm gonna write how many and the measurements. So there's 10, 10 and a half, by 10 and a half blocks and it is block A. So that way when I am um, all said and done and I need to put my block A's on, in the quilt, I can just grab the bag and go. So we'll stick this in here and then I'll set these off to the side and continue cutting and they'll go in there when I'm done. as I thought. Hey Donna, I'm done. Okay, just a second. Okay. Okay. Oh okay. wow, All you even pieces. organized them. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. What, tell me what you got. Well, I have all my fabric ones in this pile, my fabric twos, my fabric threes, and then uh, some scraps I have. Oh, okay. So, okay. How does it look? Is there any? It looks good. Now I thing? noticed that you have pieces of paper rather than uh, using your marker on the bag. Now, why did you do that? Well, um, I have really not great handwriting, and so it was easier for me to do it on paper. And um, I thought it was bolder. Like, I thought I saw it mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. And I can reuse my bags. <laughs> I like the reuse your bags. I, I'm a I do use plastic bags, but I sure do like mm -hmm. to recycle. So mm -hmm. that's great because you can just take those papers out and mm -hmm. uh, write a new paper for yeah. the next time. Very good. I like that. Now, what I do at this point, once you've got mm -hmm. everything marked, mm -hmm. then what I do is I put them in the order of what I'm going to use them as. Okay. And it's pretty logical because you know you're going to be making blocks and then you're going to be putting borders and mm -hmm. then you're going to finish off with a binding. Mm -hmm. So I would look over here and the first thing you have is corner blocks. That's going to come much later in the pattern. So mm -hmm. I would put that last and this is your uh, your block A. So that would go on top. And I do that gotcha. so that it's easy for me to reach over and get my bag yeah. and Keep moving it's nice along. and order and together. So you put those in order the way that you think they should go. Okay. Well, here's binding. Okay. Border one and strip assembly. Okay. What would go first? Strip assembly. Yes. Uh, border. Mm-hmm. And then binding. Perfect. Okay. Uh, border two with our fabric three and strip assembly. So same thing. Strip assembly first. 
Border two. Very good. And then this is just bonus. Bonus. If uh, if I sew anything together wrong, I need to start <laughs> over. <laughs> or every once in a while, if you get a fabric mm -hmm. that is a little bit skinnier, we always tell you to, mm -hmm. to use 42 inches mm -hmm. when you do the width of fabric. You mm -hmm. want it to be at least that 42 inches. But every once in a while, a manufacturer will actually skip just a little bit, mm -hmm. and you might have to add a little piece onto a border or something like that. Gotcha. Just because of the um, the failure to get the complete 42 inches when you start mm -hmm. cutting. Okay. Okay. Are you getting excited? I am getting excited. It's starting to come together. Awesome. Did you think it was hard doing all your cutting? No, it was very straightforward. And I'm a list person. I like being able to go down and yeah. And so I like that all of our cutting instructions, you have just one nice little section on a list and I can just go, okay, do all of this, fabric one is done, and then keep on going. So Awesome. That's awesome. Well, are you ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. So, well, we have to stop this video, mm -hmm. but next week... We're going to watch me sew my blocks together. That's right. So remember, if you don't have one of the kits, you can order it and we will ship as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So maybe you'll have it in time to start sewing with us next week. Yeah, okay. and be sure to like and subscribe if you like these videos. If you wanna see more videos like these in the future, let us know. All right, thanks a lot, Donna Robertson. <laughs>